Okay guys, where do I even begin? So first of all, I have a new setup. Um, if you could even call it a setup, a new background for the videos. Um, tell me what you guys think of that. It's not a big change, big difference at all. But yeah, we got a new background for the videos. Also, uh, something else happened. Islam Mahashev had an unbelievable fight versus Dustin Poirier. And I'm quite surprised by that. I think a lot of people are. So in this video, I'm going to talk about that fight. At the end of the video, I'll talk about the rest of the card. But this video is mainly going to be about, in my personal opinion, so far, I believe this is the fight of the year. Off the top of my head, just thinking about other fights and things like that. The best fight of the year, in my personal opinion. Uh, the main event of UFC 302 for the lightweight championship, Islam Mahashev versus Dustin Poirier. Amazing fight. So I'm going to talk about what happened in the fight. I did a pre-fight, fight breakdown of this fight. And I thought it was a pretty good breakdown. I thought I felt I had a really good understanding of the fight. I picked Islam Mahashev to win, I believe I said by stoppage as well. But a decision wouldn't be too surprising. If, if this is the end of Dustin Poirier's career, he did have a great career. I'll talk about all that stuff. But I know this fight is kind of about Dustin Poirier in a weird way. But I, I one of my takeaways, I think there's so many takeaways. One of my takeaways from this fight is... Islam Mahashev as a whole. I think we learned more about Islam Mahashev in this fight than in previous fights. I think this fight in a way reminded me of Islam Mahashev versus Alexander Volkanovsky 1, which is one of my favorite fights of all time. And uh, that shows why I think this fight is legendary. I was expecting Mahashev to have some success on the feet in this fight. Um, I know we a lot of the talking points going into it was like the boxing and how that would work out. And if he would just be able to get Dustin Poirier inevitably to the ground and eventually submit him. Like we've seen people do to Dustin Poirier in the past. And this wasn't a fight where I feel like the hype was like, man, is Dustin actually destined to win the title? Is it going to happen? I don't think this was a fight where we expected the fight to be really good. I think we kind of expected Islam to win, but there was always that intrigue factor of like, is Dustin Poirier actually going to be able to pull off one of the craziest upsets of all time and beat this guy who looks unbeatable in a lot of fans' eyes? Not that I'm saying that I thought Islam Mahashev was unbeatable because I do understand that every fighter is beatable. And I think we saw that last night with Islam Mahashev. Dustin Poirier did not beat Islam Mahashev. He does get finished, but he was able to challenge Islam. And that's what I'm talking about when I say we learned a bit about Islam Mahashev in this fight. We really saw him get tested. And I think that surprise factor, the fact that the fight was actually really good, and we had these expectations of like, ah, Islam's probably just going to take him down and win, um, exploit the massive grappling advantage that he has. We just kind of expected that. I feel like a lot of the fans, some fans, I knew a lot of people who were picking Poirier. I don't know if they were doing it for fun or if they actually felt he was going to get it done, but uh, he was actually a challenge. So early on, Islam Mahashev did have a nice moment on the feet. He was able to get Dustin Poirier to the ground with like a lot of ferocity. And I was like, man... This dude's just no joke. I believe he takes the back of Poirier with a crazy, he goes for this Kimura. And I was like, oh, he might fall off top here. And then he gets like a crazy back take transition, which I, which stood out to me in round one. That was very impressive. And Dustin Poirier just kind of rides out round one. Like it just felt the energy of the crowd. Like it was a clear round, easy round for Islam Mahasha, but the energy of the crowd made me think, maybe kind of believe that Dustin really had a shot at winning. In round two early on, he started to stuff some takedowns. I know some people are criticizing Islam Mahasha's wrestling now and saying, maybe it's not as good as we thought, or it's not as good as Habib's. Um, interesting talking point there. I always thought that Islam Mahashev was better than Habib. Not that I'm rethinking that, but I do think maybe I may have over, I don't know, maybe my expect, maybe I over, maybe I overrated Islam Mahashev a little bit, to be honest. Not that he's not the best fighter on the planet right now, because I do believe he is, but Islam won many boxing exchanges. I wrote that down. I wrote down some brief notes here. That stood out to me. We saw this fight end up on the feet a lot. And we thought pre-fight, if the fight's on the feet and if they're boxing a lot, we're really going to see Dustin Poirier kind of piece up Islam Mahashev. And I kind of, I talked about that in my uh, pre-fight breakdown. And I do think, you know, maybe I overrated Islam Mahashev going into the fight. Maybe I overrated his wrestling ability and strength. I don't really know because he did fail a lot of takedowns in this fight. But he also was able to get some nice takedowns. And I'll talk about that later. But I do think one thing that I may have underrated is his boxing. I think this is the best Islam Mahashev's boxing has ever looked. Now I'm kind of more open to saying he's like a really, really good striker. I always said he was a good striker, but he's more of a safe striker and he's a southpaw and he's pretty big and he was fighting Volk on short notice. So I never called him a great striker or anything like that. I still don't think he's... Ah, 
you probably got to say he's great now because he was able to win a lot of boxing exchanges against Dustin Poirier, who's a really good boxer. And yeah, he's older in his career. This isn't prime Poirier in my personal opinion, but this is Poirier's best performance in a UFC title fight because I think Islam's probably a better fighter than Habib, not that he is career-wise or whatever, but probably the best guy he's ever fought. And Dustin Poirier had a great performance against Islam Mahashev. And he, he did have some success in the boxing as well, but Islam Mahashev's striking stood out to me in this fight. I said uh, in my breakdown that the kicks wouldn't be too significant in this fight. And I was right about that because they are both southpaws. I wasn't expecting a lot of low kicks from Dustin. I wasn't expecting the crazy head kick knockout from Islam because they're same stance. So I was right about that. But the boxing, the boxing is what stood out. This fight had a lot of nice striking in it. Um, good boxing exchanges. It wasn't like it was extremely sloppy either. I think I underrated Islam Mahashev's boxing a little bit. On the front foot, his offensive boxing looked a lot better. Um, then it's looked in previous fights. I think he may be making improvements. He talked about post-fight that he needs to trust more in his striking. Uh, it looked like he had some good trust in his striking in that fight. He gave Dustin chances. There were some nice in-pocket exchanges, a lot of clinch work where Dustin was able to do some good work, but Islam did kind of dominate the clinch. I like Dustin's body punches in the clinch. That those were really nice. But Mahashev's clinch is probably the most underrated aspect of his game because he actually is in that position a lot. Like a lot of the time when we talk about a fighter's clinch, it's like, it's a good little thing that they have, like Charles Oliveira or something like that, but they they don't get in the clinch that much. Islam Mahashev is in the clinch in seemingly every single fight of his career. He always gets in that tie clinch. He's always able to get takedowns from those positions. He's always able to do good work with the strikes, the knees up the middle. Really good work on Dustin Poirier in this fight with the striking from Islam Mahashev from close range. He didn't overextend too much. He was not sloppy, uh, high guard, like a lot of those Russian-style boxers. I was very impressed with Islam Hashir's striking, and I thought that was surprising. So a lot of surprising aspects. That's one of the things that I put in my community post last night. And I say I talk about it in this video. A lot of surprising things happened on this card and in this fight. That's why I think this fight's kind of legendary, because the crowd got into it as well. Round four, Dustin Poirier cuts Islam Mahashev. And this is all kind of surprising, because a lot of fans... Uh, to be honest, kind of just expected Mahashev to get a submission win, dominate in the grappling, dominate in the wrestling like we've seen him do before. And that's why I think in this way, this fight reminds me of Alexander Volkanovsky versus Al Mahashev the first time. It was that surprise factor. Even though I picked Volk to win the first fight, I didn't pick him to win the second fight. I did pick Volk to beat Mahashev in the first fight. I thought he was going to get it done. I was actually wrong with that pick, but I do think that was kind of a good prediction. Um, it kind of aged well because the fight was close. Volk did have his chances, but this fight surprised me. I was very confident in Islam Mahashev, and the fight was somewhat close. One judge had a 2-2 going into round five. Round five, I mean, it was scrappy. We saw grappling. We saw Poirier takedown defense. Dustin Poirier showed a lot of heart in the fight. Um, the, cutting him in round four, seeing Islam Mahashev in those positions, getting challenged, that's the stuff we love to see as fans. And for the people who call Islam Mahashev boring, just stop that. He's had a very entertaining title reign. We're talking about a title defense versus Volk in the first fight. That was a very good fight. Um, his second title defense was a quick head kick knockout against Volk. The third title defense now, uh, against Dustin Poirier, another amazing fight. So he's having good fights. Yeah, he's getting tested more. Maybe he's not as good as we kind of thought, but who really cares? He's not boring. He's been an entertaining fighter, um, an entertaining champ so far. Interesting. I mean, he is a primary grappler, so I understand why people will, will expect him to be boring and things like that. But uh, he's had some actual entertaining fights. Yes, he is trying to wrestle, but Poirier stuffed some takedowns, so Poirier obviously deserves a lot of credit. Had some good success on the feet, cutting Islam Mahashev. So the surprising factors in this one. Yeah, Islam's improved composure on the feet, though. That's something that stood out to me. I mean, sometimes he was really sloppy on the front foot, even against Oliveira in that fight. I wasn't seeing like those massive openings. It actually felt safe with Islam Mahashev on the feet, on the front foot. He's always safe on the back foot because he's an extremely safe striker. But uh, he looked safe in the tight boxing exchanges as well with a guy like Dustin Poirier who can really box. And Poirier even gave some credit to Islam Mahashev and said he was kind of tricky and tough to hit. The crazy sweep takedown uh, in round five, which actually ends up leading to Islam Mahashev being able to get a Darsh Choke submission win over Dustin Poirier, which I'll talk more about. But that crazy sweep takedown is something that I talked about pre-fight in my video where I broke down the style of Islam Mahashev and also where I broke down this fight. The takedown versatility of Islam Mahashev is something special. When he's not able to get the single leg, when he's not able to get a double leg against, you know, the Southpaw Poirier, and it was tough, and he was he was able to shut down the guillotine attempts like I uh, said he would in the breakdown. A couple things age well. I always like to do good in the breakdown. I didn't think the fight would be that close, though, so I don't think it's my best breakdown. Yeah, that crazy sweep takedown, something that I talked about, his takedown versatility. He's able to get takedowns in a variety of ways. Like, 
I've never seen that takedown in the UFC before, and it was really nice. It was interesting, it was tricky, and it was able to get Dustin down, and that's all that matters. Doesn't matter how it looks, he got Dustin Poirier down, used his wrestling advantage, and it worked out for him as he's able to get that Darsh Hook submission win over Poirier. Yeah, crazy. Uh, Poirier did way better than I expected, way closer fight than I expected. Mahashev getting the submission win with 242 left in round five. What a submission win to really close it out. A clutch win. Two minutes 42 left in round five is kind of interesting too because Dustin Poirier fought Habib at UFC 242. So those numbers kind of add up and that's kind of interesting. But Habib back in the corner was cool. I do think obviously Dustin Poirier, a lot of the credit's going to go to Dustin Poirier in 100%. Like he challenged Islam Mahashev and I hope he retires to be honest because I think it's a great way to go out. Obviously he didn't win the title. Um, you want to win the title, but... I mean, he fought him really tough. Another challenge for Islam Mahashev. I know a lot of people are going to be saying that Mahashev is not as good as we thought. And yeah, I understand that. Maybe he isn't as good as we thought, but what a fight, man. I'm just going to be grateful for that fight. I think that fight was legendary. I think Dustin Poirier deserves massive credit for at his age, really putting up a challenge when a lot of people didn't expect that type of challenge. I mean, he did some good work in that fight against Mahashev. Even though Mahashev did clearly win, he was able to get a finish. Um, he was winning the fight, in my opinion, but, you know, I didn't expect it to be an intense fight. It was very intense, and Mahashev clutching it out, you know, not going to the scorecards was impressive, in my personal opinion. So, what an amazing legendary fight. What do you guys think about that fight? Now I'm going to talk about the other uh, fights on this card real quick. So Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. I picked Paulo Costa. I got this fight wrong. Um, I thought Paulo Costa would stand his ground more. He didn't stand his ground. He backed up because Sean Strickland put more pressure um, on Paulo Costa than he did against Strickland's Duplessis and in the Jared Cannonier fight. And I kind of thought it would work out a little bit similar to those. And I was wrong from that expectation. That's why I got that fight wrong. I also, you know, I picked Paulo Costa. It was a bad pick. But it's hard in hindsight because pre-fight, I really thought Costa would stand his ground more. I was kind of expecting more of that younger version of Paulo Costa, but I don't think he's that same fighter anymore. And I thought it'd be a close decision that he'd win. I didn't think he'd chin him or anything. Funny thing is, one of the things that really did make me lean towards picking Paulo Costa, and I never, this never happens for me, but I dreamed about this fight like a week ago and Paulo Costa, it was in the apex. Um, you know, dreams just make zero sense. So it was in the apex. Paulo Costa landed a spinning wheel kick and like dropped Strickland and then um, landed some ground and pound, like put him out cold. And then I woke up and then I like realized a few hours later, like, wait, I dreamed about that fight. Now I have to pick Costa because I had a weird feeling Costa was going to get it done. It was a weird feeling. Thing. I was leaning towards Strickland for a while, but I kind of switched on fight week. Bad pick by me, but not a very good fight. Very disappointing fight. Luckily, the main event delivered. Um, Sean Strickland is not a very entertaining fighter. I, you know, he's just going to go out there and jab. That's why I'm not too surprised, but I'm surprised that Costa fought so much off the back foot, and I knew early on I hated the game plan. He actually didn't gas out like the commentators were saying. I thought his cardio looked good, but, I mean, you can't fight Strickland like that. I did think Costa did better than Adesanya, which is kind of funny, but I didn't, I thought the fight was kind of closer than a lot of fans are saying. I know a lot of people say, you know, Strickland won easy and you're an idiot if you think Costa did good or anything. I thought the fight was somewhat close just because Strickland didn't do that much either. It was a pretty boring fight. Yes, Strickland won, but I don't know. Strickland is defensively an animal though. Like with that being said, yes, he is boring, but I actually don't know if he's going to be very beatable in future fights. Now, every fighter is beatable, but I could see Strickland winning back the title maybe in the future because he's not that old either. Kevin Holland versus Michal Oleksajek. What stands out to me, good win for Kevin Holland, Michal Oleksajek's toughness. I know we're not going to give fighters credit for things like that. He gets his arm broken in an arm bar. I don't know, you know, the official state of the injury or whatever, but I didn't hear the commentary giving so much credit to Oleksajek, you know, so I'm going to give the credit to Oleksajek. But the crazy thing is, like, right when he got in that arm bar, I was telling my brother, I was like, this guy's not going to tap. Comes out to, like, Hussar music, 
Mihalo Sejek is inspired by the Hussars, and I was like, this dude's got the mentality. He's never, he's not tapping. I watched this fight versus Michel Pereira in the buildup. He didn't tap to that rear naked choke. This dude is tough, man. He's a savage. Respect to that man, because I really respect fighters who don't tap. And uh, you can really make an argument, a real case that they shouldn't have stopped that fight anyway. He didn't tap. He should be allowed to fight with a broken arm if he wants to. You know what I mean? It's a fight. So kind of savage, you know, it's savage stuff. And I thought that Mihal Sejek really deserved credit. I wasn't surprised that he didn't tap, but he deserves massive credit for that because that guy's tough as nails. And he gave himself every chance to win. And that's the stuff that I love to see personally. I always like to observe how tough they are because I think that's one of the most underrated aspects of the sport. It's just how tough these guys are. And Mihalo Sejek deserves massive credit for that. And great win for Kevin Holland. Good bounce back win. And I did get that fight right, if you guys think I'm coping or something. Uh, Nico Price versus Alex Morono. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Randy Brown versus Eliseo Zuleski Dos Santos. Eh, it was interesting, I guess. Cesar Almeida versus Roman Kopilov. I got this fight wrong. I win, I believe, 9-3 and three on this card. Cesar Almeida... I thought he was going to win because I thought he would be able to stuff a couple takedowns. I knew he had a big cardio advantage. I do think he has a striking advantage in that matchup. Yes, he did get dropped in round one, but I think we kind of saw as the fight was going longer that Almeida's kind of good on the feet, but he just can't stuff a takedown out of nowhere, even though he's stuffing takedowns from Dylan Bodka. Very surprising. I don't really know. Jailton Almeida with actually a very impressive win over Alexander Romanov. I know people like to call him boring, but he deserves credit for this one because Alexander Romanov, if he is something, is a good grappler, a good wrestler, and he was able to take him down and then eventually get a first round submission. Very impressive, in my personal opinion. Grant Dawson versus Joe Selecki was what it was. Good win for Grant Dawson. A lot of control on that one. Phil Rowe versus Jake Matthews I thought was a great fight. I was happy that I got that fight right because I was very on the edge about who to pick for that one. But a good win for Jake Matthews. He fought very well. Mickey Gall versus Basil Hafez. I see some people criticizing Basil Hafez. I actually thought it was a reckless performance but a very good performance. I think he's going to be really good. I really do. And yeah, I, th I thought he looked pretty good. I, I know some people are I think Mickey Gall had a good performance, even in the loss. I, I wouldn't cut Mickey Gall, even though he's 7-6. and six. Eileen Perez with a good win over Jocelyn Edwards. The fight was kind of decent. Had some good moments. Mitch Raposo versus Andre Lima. Good win for Andre Lima. Yeah, but that's pretty much my thoughts on the entire UFC 302 card. But mainly that main event. Dustin Poirier, I, I think he should retire because I think it's a good way to go out. It was a great performance from Dustin Poirier. Great performance. But I did kind of want to focus a little more in this video about Islam Mahashev because I do think we learned a bit more about Mahashev. If Dustin is retiring... You know, he's not going to be the most relevant fighter that we have to talk about. Mahashev in the future, he has future matchups that are more interesting now. I'm a little more lenient towards Armin Saruki and actually being able to beat him, um, which I think makes the division more fun in a way. With that being said, he may not be as good as we thought, but you never really know how to assess things. And he his striking is better than I thought, so maybe his wrestling's not as good. I, I don't really know, but what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about UFC 302 as a whole? Make sure to leave your opinions in the comments below. If you guys would like to subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you, and thanks for watching this video.